Hello friends, Steve Stockton here with you. Welcome to our latest video. Today we're going to bring you the strange tale of the town that everyone abandoned. Join us. In 1787, Portlock, Alaska was established by ship captain Nathaniel Portlock. A beautiful piece of land on the southern side of the Kenai Peninsula, plenty of space for a town. It wasn't long before Portlock was a bustling fishing community. The community continued to thrive and grow over the years, and by 1915, there was a nearby canning company in Port Graham, and Portlock had a coal storage facility for cod and halibut. The Alutik, or Pacific Eskimo community of Port Chatham, was growing as well, and in 1921, a post office was built because the communities were merging. People were able to make a life in Portlock. It seemed like every few years a new establishment would come to the area. In 1928, Portlock built its first cannery to keep up with the supply of fish that was coming from the fish traps and fishing vessels. However, in the late 1930s, Rumors began to spread about a monster that was terrorizing Port Chatham villagers, and by 1950, the only person that would be left in Portlock was the town postmaster. Yes, that's right, everyone abandoned Portlock. The first sign of trouble came in 1931 when Andrew Kamluck was doing some logging in the mountains. When he didn't return home that evening, search crews went out to look for him. He was found dead from a massive head wound and the weapon was a piece of logging equipment found near his body. That same month, a gold prospector left his cabin in Port Chatham to do some prospecting in the mountains close to where the logger was found. He told a friend where he was going, just in case something happened. Days later, when the prospector hadn't returned, his friend went to local authorities and reported him missing. Although searches were conducted, he was never found. Villagers and residents alike were starting to whisper about these cases when a group of cannery workers went on a hunting trip for doll sheep and bear. They gathered their supplies, kissed their family members goodbye, and headed into the forest. Days passed, and no word from the hunters. Worried family members descended on the steps of searchers, begging them to go look for their loved ones. The search parties looked for over a week for the group of men, but no trace of them was ever found. Then, a rumor started that a mutilated body had washed down from the mountains into a local lagoon. It was torn to shreds and was missing some of the organs. The rumors and speculations circulated through the Portlock community and into nearby villages. But, without proof of anything, it was, in fact, just rumors. Then, there was the footprint. Two men on a successful moose hunt had shot a moose and was tracking it through the forest. It wasn't long before the hunters came upon tracks that were human-like, but were in excess of 18 inches in length. The men were spooked and made sure to track the wounded moose together instead of splitting up, like they had initially intended. As they tracked, they realized the huge footprints they had spotted were also following the wounded moose. Hours passed, and the hunters were about to give up the hunt, when in a clearing there was a patch of bedded-down grass and broken tree branches. Hair, blood, and carnage covered the ground. A struggle between the dying moose and the creature with the huge feet had torn up large clumps of earth and even uprooted a few trees. This was all the men needed to see before making haste back to their camp, grabbing a few essentials, making sure their guns were loaded, and leaving behind their tents and sleeping bags. It was said that the men felt they were being followed the whole trip home. It was after this sighting that the people of Port Chatham and Portlock would start being terrorized by a beast the Alutique called Nantanag, or half-man, half-beast. As people continued to go missing and rumors spread about this mountain beast, villagers and townsfolk alike were becoming so terrified they didn't want to leave their houses even in the daytime. People slowly started abandoning their homes and remaining parents wouldn't let their children attend the school. By 1949, Portlock was all but abandoned. The only person that remained, as we said, by 1950, was the postmaster, and he left in 1951. Earlier records were consulted for any mysteries that might have happened in the area by historians and adventurers alike. In 1905, it was reported that the cannery closed for an entire year because the workers and natives were fearful of the thing in the woods. They would return to work the following year, but were never able to fully let their guard down. Then, in the 1920s, a man named Albert Petka supposedly scared off a big hairy creature with his dogs 
but not before receiving a fatal blow to the chest. He lived long enough to recount what had happened to him before succumbing to his trauma. Around the same time, stories were circulating about prospectors that were going missing, never to return. Some of their bodies were found weeks later. One was missing its arms, one was missing legs, one was even missing its head. It became commonplace for hunters to be reported missing and never found. In 1968, the goat hunter recounted his story being chased by a creature in the woods. He never returned to the area to hunt. Another incident in 1973, three fishermen had docked in Portlock to wait out a heavy rainstorm that lasted for three days. They said each night something walked around their tents all night on what sounded like two feet. And in 1990, a medic responding to a call for a native man that was incarcerated happened to mention hunting in Portlock. The inmate sat up wide-eyed and asked the medic, Did it bother you? Did you see it? Today, Portlock is a popular ghost town for thrill-seekers, Bigfoot enthusiasts, and simply curious people looking for their own scares or stories to report or record. There are many stories and videos about the area, and many theories as to what happened in the little fishing community of Portlock. One tourist of the area, simply named Zach, recounted what he saw while visiting the area. Quoting here, because this evilness was said to walk on two feet, that diminished the odds of it being a more predictable predator such as a bear or a wolf. Many claim it was a Bigfoot, Yeti, or Sasquatch. It is also said that there were many trees throughout the area that were completely ripped out of the ground and turned upside down with their roots sticking up in the air. This was thought to be more proof of whatever this evil creature was. It was too powerful for any human or even village to topple. End quote. Another anonymous author writes, For Halloween, we decided to reach out to a local historian and adventure to see if there were any unsolved mysteries in Alaska that would fit the spooky mood of the holiday. He came back with a collection of research of strange happenings in the town of Portlock that is south of Homer. These stories pointed to a large hairy beast, smaller hairy devils, a wailing spirit of a woman that wanders the wilderness, and many deaths that were hard to explain. Victor Smith recounted a sleepless night he spent stranded in the haunted town as his boat had started leaking and he was waiting for a tow. He docked his boat as best he could and decided to take up refuge in one of the abandoned cabins. Bored, he wandered around the village. It started to rain, Victor said in a shaky voice. I was just kind of looking around the town. I'd heard rumors, you know, from back in the day. They didn't hold any stock with me. I don't get scared. I made my way around the relics of what had once been a busy, thriving town. The rain had started to come down in sheets, and I was cold. I kind of stepped into the first house I came to that looked kind of cozy. I had just dried off and was about to have a seat at an old wooden table with a leg missing when I started to hear the faint cry of a woman. Thinking I had inadvertently intruded into a house that someone still resided in, I quickly made my way to the door and reached for the handle while shouting, Sorry, ma'am. I didn't know anyone still lived here. I turned the knob and it fell off in my hand. I stood there for a moment looking at the knob and a cold shiver went through my entire body. I could feel the icy breath of something on my neck and I froze in place. I didn't want to turn around to see who or what it was as I knew anything living wouldn't have breath that cold. I slowly put the knob back on the piece of metal that remained sticking out of the door and turned it. Thank God it opened. I got the hell out of there and never looked back. I ran as quickly as I could back to my boat and waited in the leaking vessel until my tow arrived. I will never go back to that place. It is 100% haunted, evil, deadly. And if that wasn't enough, there's also the story told by user Little D of the Sea. I had heard there were hauntings and ghosts, she writes. I wanted to see for myself. She tells her vlog members that she had asked some friends if they wanted to tag along, and they all said, hell yes. We made our way to Homer and stayed there the first night, she says. Early the next day, we made our way to Portlock, planning to spend a few days sightseeing and taking pictures. We found a suitable spot to camp and set our gear up. We started exploring straight away. The area is beautiful with lush forests and snow-capped peaks, very picturesque. We stayed out longer than expected, however, and light was starting to fade. Suddenly, one of the group members said, Hey, did you guys hear that? No, we collectively said. What did you hear? The person responded, A woman. 
moaning or crying. It sounded like it came from up there. She was pointing up at some cliffs. We stood still, all eyes looking up toward the wall of jagged rock. We all heard it this time, a soft moan, like a woman in pain. We wanted to make sure no one was hurt, so we started making our way towards the sound when the girl that had first heard the sound stopped, turned to us wide-eyed and said, I'm not going a step further. It's a ghost. I laughed at her speculation and asked her what made her think such a thing. She grabbed my arm, hard, and said, Look. We all glanced around her and followed her pointing finger up the cliffside to see a woman in a black flowing dress standing on the very edge of the steepest cliff staring down at us. I locked eyes with her or it. I felt my blood run cold. Then that howl that she let. I couldn't even finish the sentence. I knew right away she was a spirit. Her eyes were hollow, her mouth agape and twisted in a silent scream, and that awful moan came once more. I want to go now, the other girl said. We ran back to the campsite, jerked our tents up, threw what we could over our shoulders and made our way back to Homer. I will never go back there again. So what do you think, folks? How would you like to spend a few days in Port Lock, Alaska? I look forward to your comments, but please keep it friendly and respectful. Meanwhile, be good to yourselves and each other. Stay safe out there. It's spooky, and I'll see you a little farther on down the trail. I'm Steve Stockton, and I'll talk to you next time. Tell your animal Steve says hi.